Howdy folks. Today we are looking at a Sherwood S8900A. This is the last of the American-made Sherwoods, kind of the last of the big American-made receivers in general, at least as far as the uh, vintage silver face era goes. So yeah, this thing is uh, very, very heavy. It is uh, one of its primary characteristics uh, when compared to a lot of the other stuff I've had on the bench. This thing weighs, I don't know, three to four times as much. I'm not sure how much it actually weighs, but it is stupid heavy comparatively. Um, it's a it's an interesting looking beast. Uh, it uh, looks pretty good powered on. I did see it uh, lit up before, uh, before this one came over to uh, my bench. But per my kind of standards here, I'm going to open it up and check it out before I power it up here. So let's go ahead and uh, get into it. All right, overall, I would say it looks pretty decent inside. I'm uh, not seeing anything too scary going on in here. It's definitely got some age on it, but uh, that's that's not surprising at all. The caps here look uh, good and new. Caps look good all around. If I recall correctly, this one was... Uh, recapped according to the uh, previous owner and it looks like that is indeed the case including the uh, big filter caps here so that's pretty cool i think the next thing i want to do here is go ahead and power it up and uh, take a look at it see how well everything works All right, and here we go. Let's uh, set that on aux for nothing. Everything's centered out. That's set to normal stereo. Speakers are both off. All right. All right, so we've got lights here. I saw the stereo light flash up. We've got nothing back here. We'll have to investigate that. Uh, let's see if this thing can make noise. Okay. Let's put on some speakers. All right. It does indeed make noise. Okay, tuner seems fairly sensitive. I'm happy with that. Let's see if the rear speakers work. As you can see, the button here for the rear speakers is a little dodgy. It doesn't catch every time. Maybe one out of ten, it doesn't catch. There you go, you saw it. Sometimes. Yeah, these have a, a little plastic catch inside of them, which, uh, generally speaking, is beyond my ability to work on, so that's going to be how it is. Um, but it does stay on when it's on. So let's see if the rears work. Yep, all good there. Uh, let's see, next thing I want to try out is the... Let's try Phono. Thank you. 
Not sure if you can hear the difference, but it really flattens out uh, here in the room if you do, if you switch it down to mono. Not really sure why it has the reverse setting and the left only and the right only setting. It's kind of interesting. The only thing I can see people really wanting to use most of the time is stereo. But it's a it's an interesting artifact nonetheless. Um, another kind of interesting uh, feature of this thing is this is uh, one of the only receivers I've seen that is bass heavy enough that I'm not looking for 11 on the bass hub. Um, yeah, this one I'm pretty happy a little bit lower. Uh, let's see what else do we want to look at. Uh, let's try the uh, try the aux. I'd say that works pretty well as well. So I think that'll do for audio tests. The next thing I want to do is pull the face off and uh, see if I can figure out, or if I even have to pull the face off, to uh, get in and investigate this, uh, this dead bulb over here. Okay, what well, you can't really see here, so it looks like there's a, a piece of blue, what do they call it, vellum here, and this is the bulb, which you can't see. Oh, that is heavy. This is the bulb right here for that. <clears throat> looks like it's a uh, bayonet style lamp. And I'm trying to figure out how to make enough space in here to get my fingers down in there to get it out. Oh, look at that. That's the magic trick. All right, I'm going to tip this up again so you can see it here. This whole little housing actually comes out. Yeah. Easy peasy. And then it's just like any other bayonet and the lamp's out. And just my angle here. Alright, so this is where we just took the bad lamp out. in the parts box here. Uh, I don't have a ton of options for bayonets. Looks like I've got uh, warm white and that might be it. Let's see. Yeah, I got wedges in different colors. I got screw bases in different colors, but yeah, bayonets looks like I've only got warm white. So I guess we're going to do warm white. So at least that'll uh, that'll look original. So that's positive. And this little piece that we took out of here, we didn't actually need to. It just holds the uh, the actual meter here in place. So that's. this guy back. No. Interesting. All right.
right, the bulb might not be burned out. We actually have a socket that isn't working. That's interesting. I guess we're going to have to go exploring up underneath. Uh, you can see, so yellow here appears to be ground. I wonder, let's see. Ah, okay. Yeah, before we go exploring too far, let's be smarter. Okay, so the bulb only lights up when we're in FM mode. So let's go back and make sure our other bulb is bad, which I think it is. Yep, got nothing. And if we drop this guy in now. Lights up. So now, of course, I kind of want to replace the other lamps back here, see if we can color match a little bit better with this guy. Ooh, that's not good. What do we got going on here? All right, so our bulb here doesn't seem happy and did seem to be very, very bright. I'm wondering if, let's see here. Uh, you say eight volts and you are also, you're an eight volt LED, but it definitely didn't seem very happy with that. Let's, uh, Let's take a look here and see if this really is 8 volts. Now we're going back to playing operation here, trying to uh, catch the uh, spring in the middle of this thing. That's getting 12 volts AC. Almost 13. All right. Well, that would be why the uh, bulb blew and why the LED is overdriving. So I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of exploring and find out if uh, that is supposed to be 12 volts. And in which case I'll have to find some 12 volt bayonets. And uh, let's see if, uh, if that doesn't work or if it's not supposed to be 12 volts, if it's supposed to be like eight or 6.3 or one of those, then uh, we'll need to explore a little more why that is uh, not what one might expect. So I guess one place to look is let's check out some of the other bulbs. Let's see here. Let's see. G E. 1816. I'm not familiar with that number off the top of my head. Let's see what else we got. Actually, let's look in here and see if we've got 12 volts. Okay, we've got 12 volts. I can hold a connection here. Yeah, we've got 12 volts here. 
Which makes me think these are, yeah, these are all supposed to be 12 volt lamps. So I'm going to have to find myself some uh, 12 volt bayonets. That's going to be my, my solution here. So yeah, if we take one of these uh, 12 volt dudes from over there and put it over here. Yeah, okay. Let's turn this off so I don't hurt myself. Now, now you can see we've got a nice consistent look there. This is where we took our bulb out. So yeah, and that is much happier. So I'm gonna have to find some 12 volt bayonets. And uh, I think that'll be as far as we're gonna go with this one today. I'll uh, probably reach out to our friend Joe and see what he's got, see if he's got any 12 volt bayonets, maybe in colors play around with that a little bit but we'll have to save that for next time yeah this will uh, do for now we've got a uh, good functioning uh, good functioning receiver here that we just need to uh, finish up a little bit on the cosmetics and uh, should be good to go so yeah thank you as always for watching and we will see you in the next one